Welcome to Strong Security Elements for IoT Manufacturing. Thank you for joining me today. I'm Lanson Lachance, representing GlobalSign as Vice President of Product Management, leading our IoT identity solutions. I'm going to run through some ideas and perspectives around incorporating strong information security elements into your IoT devices during the manufacturing process. Within this context, we'll look at how we are examining the risks associated with IoT products, then we'll discuss some of the approaches for implementing these technologies in the manufacturing cycle. And finally, we'll cover some of the example IoT use cases, which are well aligned with the application of these technologies. As we look at the evolving IoT space, one bet we're willing to make is that the privacy and security of IoT products will continue to become more distinguishing factors and differentiators. In this vein, we'll address how products can be built to achieve these goals through security by design, leveraging past technology successes, as well as address some of the nuances and requirements of implementing within the manufacturing process. Before we dive in, I wanted to set the stage as to how we observe the current state of IoT security in the market. At this early stage, we're just starting to see a bit of phase transition from strategy to implementation. But regardless, the field of IoT is still at peak height. As widespread implementations haven't fully deployed into the market environment, we've also yet to see winning architectures for ecosystems. However, we do observe and recognize a bit of standardization within specific verticals like automotive and energy. Traditionally, physical product production is a very distinct skill set and different from software development. In this context, we observe that in numerous cases, new entrants in the smart connected product space do lack information security expertise. There's also no lack of industry or technology consortiums and standard bodies working to drive these technology standards. For many of you, this is a question you've already answered, and for others, it's something that's just being grappled with. But why should you invest in security for your product or ecosystem? First, I think many can appreciate the existing drivers of risk reduction from traditional InfoSec, including protecting the corporate networks from attack. But in addition to the traditional drivers, some important considerations extend into fraud prevention needs of connected products, specifically to combat the counterfeiting and privacy risk. These security features are also leading into value-added drivers, helping products to differentiate amongst competition and potentially gain certifications that help their positioning. All these components definitely have their nuances and priorities across separate vertical and horizontal perspectives of the ecosystem. For example, the consumer side might be more focused on the privacy supporting features as the industrial segment is probably more concerned with reducing the safety risk of the implementation. Moving into some of the core focus of how organizations can successfully build secure and safe connected products, I'd like to address security by design. Security by design thinking affords organizations much greater return on their security investments as changes are much easier to make early in the product lifecycle, especially as appropriate security and privacy features are rarely ever bolt on. The how of this approach is much more variable based upon the organization and operating environment. First though, you must think like a bad actor and identify the core targets in the system. From there, you assess the probability and magnitude of a breach that in that asset area. And then finally, you can move on to an evaluation of the technology to mitigate the risk. One of the core takeaways here is also the dimension that security is never going to be a single person's responsibility, since no one person will truly understand the full scope of the environment. It's a team game and must be played as such to succeed. The next tactical point we'd like to address for achieving security in your products is as what we call here to stand on the shoulders of giants. What I mean here is that we should not ignore the internet success we've had to date and recognize that the information security principles and best practices have really matured over the past decade plus. Additionally, while the hype is around the things in the ecosystem and the solutions, they're only one component. And we still have the users, services, and organizations that will be core and essential actors. While there are undeniably new considerations that devices bring to the table, there are existing solutions and standards that succeed and can be applied into device environments, which enable distributed and trusted identity assurance. And these solutions have the benefit of being battle tested and improved on over the past decade plus in the existing internet. 
As a recap, some of the core information security concepts that we'll talk about for building into your IoT product include authentication in the sense of authenticating devices to cloud services between users and devices and from thing to thing. Next is encryption, which affords privacy and secrecy of communications between two entities. And finally, we're going to want to address the integrity of communications so that messages can be trusted not to be have, have been altered in transit. One of the proven technology solutions we have today for device identity is public key infrastructure, or PKI, as well as its application in a variety of protocols and standards like TLS. PKI here is really an InfoSec Swiss Army knife and allows you to enable a whole range of information security principles, including those three we just mentioned. As a perfect pair to PKI for beefing up the assurance around the integrity and uniqueness of device identity, security-focused crypto processors like TPMs, which provide strong hardware-based protection of the device's private keys from compromise and unauthorized export. So far in this discussion, we've operated mainly in the theory side, but now we'll address some of the realities of building these technologies into the device manufacturing process. For example, how does an IoT product architect or developer address concerns including a minimally entrusted contract manufacturing environment where they're looking to reduce the threat of overproduction and counterfeiting, also with mechanisms to enable auditable history and tracking while mitigating the risks of manufacturing downtime due to network connectivity? Are there technologies and solutions you can deploy that allow you to limit the amount of trust you put in the manufacturing environment while still building trustable products and reducing risks of overproduction? The answer here is a yes. And one approach I'm covering combines TPM hardware with PKI enrollment techniques during the device and platform build process. Leveraging these technologies can help you arrive at a built product situation where you have assurance about the integrity of the hardware protection, you have insurance that the credentials you issue to the device are protected by the hardware, and that the enrollment process has verified these components and assumptions prior to the issuance of an identity from a pre-trusted hierarchy. Let's have a quick look at a generalized architecture for this type of solution. In the left side, we can imagine devices proceeding through a manufacturing line. At some point, usually in the final stage of the build process, the devices enter a configuration and initialization stage. In this case, this is where we prescribe for the device identity provisioning to occur. A provisioning system on the manufacturing line interfaces with the devices, potentially over probes or network connections, and will facilitate the device to create keys, the extraction of a device ID number, maybe from a manufacturing system, and then proxy an identity issuance request to GlobalSign's high volume certificate services, which issue a credential and install it back on the device. After this stage, you will have a provision device with an identity credential from a trusted issuance process, protected from compromise by secure hardware. The credential can be used in the operational phase of the device's lifecycle for authentication or other security needs. These technologies have a very vertical agnostic range of applications and use cases. However, there are some that we have been involved with at GlobalSign in the near term which are particularly suited towards the application of PKI and IoT for strong device identity. Among these included our network or server appliances for feature licensing, device identity for home appliances to authenticate and encrypt communications providing privacy, Connected diagnostic equipment running embedded servers which need to provide a trusted SSL connection for administrators, as well as the very prevalent connected car use case, leveraging strong device identity for secure communications, but also for trusted and secure firmware updates. Here I want to run through some of the components and benefits of leveraging the cloud for your identity credential issuance and management. Many of these concepts are familiar to consumers of SaaS solutions, but sometimes are newer to operational technology experts who may not have as broad or deep experience consuming cloud services and their solutions. First, by looking towards the cloud, it really enables simplified infrastructure requirements and costs. For on-premise hardware setups and configurations, as well as the ability to bring on additional manufacturing sites with marginal incremental costs. Echoing this is the elasticity that SaaS models provide allowing OEMs to better tie expenses and revenues in operational expenditures, well, as well as with the ability to scale the system dynamically, meeting the needs of the business growth. 
And finally, there's the added functionality that a platform can provide for the auditability, access control, and reporting that are often more difficult to maintain across a multi-site on-premise deployment. As an overview here, let's look at some of the new considerations that the IoT is bringing as to how your security posture is established. As with any assessment of the IoT, the number of devices, users, and systems we expect to operate in each ecosystem is magnifying, and you truly need to understand the impact. The nature of IoT devices are much more diverse than the existing internet environment, which will cause and drive new approaches as to how the solutions are architected and built. Trust models are also evolving, where the public trust model that traditional web PKI is built upon might not be required for all solutions. And finally, with the time dimension, these solutions, you must consider how the products are built from provisioning, operation, all the way through sunsetting. GlobalSign has been focused at understanding these new considerations and has invested in a flexible, scalable, and purpose-built PKI platform, which addresses these needs of the IoT. First is the scalability to address a massive number of identities and endpoints in each customer ecosystem, along with the dynamic and fast operational requirements. Then we enable support for the complexities and nuances of the variety of devices and, and environments, as well as affording variations in the usage and lifecycle models. GlobalSign is also able to provide all of these in a customizable and business-focused deployment model to enable success in the solution while being cost-effective. Wrapping up here, what is the answer to enabling robust identity and security in your IoT solution? Well, there's obviously a range of components, but we feel first and foremost is to truly consider the security throughout the life cycle of the product, starting as early as possible. Second, when working with a third-party service and solution provider, ensuring that they are capable of maintaining the integrity and availability of the services is critical. Third, to look at and leverage existing proven solutions where possible, especially as security is, con is concerned, rather than leveraging novel or proprietary standards and approaches. And in conclusion, we'd recognize the diversity of these devices and ecosystems is massive, and each will have its own key needs. Therefore, leveraging solutions that are flexible is a key component for success. As we close today, I'll leave you with this brief overview of a generalized IoT architectural model, representing the numerous actors and a set of devices in the ecosystem, with all entities leveraging trusted identity credentials and management services to allow secure communications. So thank you for listening in today, and I look forward to speaking with you in the future about the specific needs in your solution and environments.